Welcome to Dungeon Master, where today we are looking at a replicant of all that was left of part seven into part eight we travel. Only we must show you that we have some business at the alchemic, alchemical, however you say it, and astrological problems with tracing the sci-fi back to the beginning of time in which we will throw it open and say this is our circumspectual evidence that was found at the library of Geodon. I mean, ah, uh, another planet. Anyways, we must go on and turn the page. Now here we've come to the Dungeon Master Residence where we are now reading this very book outside and it's creating quite a catastrophe in the meantime. So to double check this is real, in Dungeon Master 8, it says Solomon died. No wonder such a fracas. And whoever dies in comics, have you ever seen a comic where someone dies? But checking the text we see. And we are now ages later. I knew we were a page behind. Hang on. This syntactical grammar makes me just want to write code in the middle of video games. Did you know you can splice those games together? Call of Duty and oh, Grand Theft Auto. And here he is, the man that will stop it all. He's not even real. He's made of fire. He's made of flame. This isn't even what the comic is about. This is a flashback. We must check with the sacred text of the Arabic prophet. What is your story? And why were you in this jar? Oh, wait. wait. This guy was in a jar? Why isn't there a jar? Oh, it looks like he's trying to get some peanut butter out of a jar in that picture. That's interesting. The fisherman cried. The dark fisherman cried. They edited it out. Oh, happy day. The demon said, be glad. Now, the cleric has entered the scene and is obeying Dungeon Master so that they can put on the wall spell they gained from Pokemon. <laughs> be glad that you will soon be put to death. The fisherman said, you deserve to be put to shame for such tidings. Why do you wish to kill me with this book on tape? So we come back up to here to Rainbow Bubblegum. It's a commercial. We like commercials in Dungeon Master, don't we? We can go in and out and fade with a commercial. But it seems as though the bard is struggling not to write a Rainbow song. But he doesn't like the way that sounds anyway. So... We travel from the gum page to something we've never seen before in such an ancient, well-protected, well-preserved comic. And that we just can't even look at. We'll go down here. Oh, what is this? Captain Adam is now the shadow? Or is this a different comic? I'm not sure how many comics they squeezed into these things. Or was Shadow part of the Black Adam? Or were we reading a script called Bride of the Damned, which is a remake of Bride of the Atom? I don't know. But look at here. It says, hence when the absorption rate exceeded your limit, you were bumped to mere six days rather than 18 years. Check in here. So... This is my journal. I have released you and delivered you from the bottom of the sea and brought you back to this world. The, the demon uh, replied, make a wish. The fisherman was happy and asked, what? What should I wish of you? The demon replied, tell me how you wish to die. And we'll go back up here and read this part again because... It says, conclusion, although there are no limits to the amount of radiation, your metal shell can return to the quantum flow. Even you must exercise moderation. You cannot absorb. I know, I know, much too soon, said the warrior in the back room, trying to find the, the sorceress from part six who left in outer space. 
No offense, Doc. But I figured that much out myself. I gotta go. I'm already late. Oh, well, I told you she wasn't here. But who's this? Is this Captain Adam or the Shadow? Or that the one of the same? Sorry, Captain. These orders just came down from General Elling's office. He's got Captain... And it fades to a double check on the text. So we go down and look at this. There's... A common element gone from the page. Then we must give it to the light. The fisherman said, make it short, for I am at my rope's end. The demon said, you should know that I am one of the renegade rebellious demons i together with the giant saka rebelled against the prophet solomon the son of david who sent me against asaph barkia who took me by force and bade me be led in defeat and humiliation before the prophet solomon when the prophet looks no, I don't think we're matching this page, so we'll turn it on. Turn it on this way. See what we got. See where we're going. We've got a small ways to go. You know, it's almost half the halfway point to the board. So bear with me, children. This is getting scarily boring, and we must get some interplay with some kind of dragon or something. Wait, what is this? This isn't boring. But all of a sudden, it must be held from a point of view of both pages to even be redeemed so let's look we can't exactly see what they're saying but we can't exactly know why these frames here and these frames here appear so different and like each frame is a different story with a different person there's barely few things that match up about all these different looking pictures i can't Handle, and there it is. You have just earned five charisma for entering the fence of always during the things that made us all fall in love and have nightmares. Anyway, over here, we see where Dungeon Master is finally getting some picture threads of the actual story, whether it's the Shadow or Captain Adam. And I will now recite the next five lines. This brass jar confined me inside and sealed it with a head lead seal on which he imprinted God's almighty name. Then he commanded me from during these 200 years, I will make him rich. But, uh, but then he, no one sets me free after the hundreds. Then I vowed to myself, whoever sets me free, I will open for him all the treasures, all the treasures, uh, of the earth, pardon, S during these hundred years, I will make him king, make myself his servant, and fulfill every day, excuse me, warrior, three of his wishes. But that hundred years, two plus all the intervening years went by, and no one set me free. And I raged and raved and growled and snorted and said to myself, whoever delivers me from now on, I will either put him to shame the worst of debtors or let him choose for himself the manner. And that takes us to the fact that this is Green Arrow, yet it's in Captain Adam, yet it's in the shadow. Yet this seems more like a commercial for this entrance point beyond where we must venture. Now, if you see very carefully, look at the Centurions, which seems to be another comic book that they're putting out at DC. And if these are all, excuse me, I, I must have just... <sighs> I had to use seasoning salt in that last scene. I was so close to falling asleep that I was falling over, you know. No, I'm kidding. All right, so anyways, we have something up here. And though those are all commercials, and that we're doing fine, I'm not really sure 
why my camera is making squeaky squawk noises. Maybe it's that Pikachu I trapped in it. But anyway, we go down here, and again, it feels like once again we're in a whole other story. But none of the stories that are advertised. But we do see some similarities. Now, if I must, I must. Beloved wife of Wade Ealing. Wade Ealing? If this wasn't your mother's tombstone, Peggy, I'd swear. Here lies Angela Ealing, beloved wife of Wade Ealing. I mean, I can understand her remarrying after all. Everyone thought I was dead. But him, how on this blessed earth could Angela have settled for him? Made him stepfather to my children? And now are the days of our dungeon master. Now, Dad, you said if we stopped by to pay our respects, your mom wouldn't have a scene. Make a scene? That's weird. There's always a big scene when I go to the graveyard of who's offering me a nice casket to sleep in through the night. I still don't want to accept it, Peggy. I still, I still miss her. I miss her damn much. He misses her damn much, and now this guy's studying a board full of numbers that are somehow related to what we've seen already. And there's so much dialogue in this capsule bubble that we could spend just the whole rest of the time after the first third of the film is replenishing. And all we know is there's bubbles to own all over here that are taking over this page. Examine. Look, lady, my book, anybody who wears a costume on the street is certifiable. I never laid eyes on Roy Bivolo or his weapons once he began that whacked out rainbow radar routine. And I never heard of this Dr. Spectral before today. That seems to be why we were avoiding the bubbles on this side. They're not even politically correct. What is he talking about anyway? Let's go down here. Oh, well, the next time I say that nobody worse going after settles for a measly 50,000 advance these days, maybe my editor will listen. Sorry for taking up your valuable... T -t 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 Whoa, this is getting weird again. Dungeon Master, I need you over here. It's not like a stop. It's only real. <laughs> we're, uh, we're basically almost... A little over halfway done with real one, and we've spotted some kind of lizard people remnants in this scene, but we can't really tell what it is. What do you think? Dungeon Master says it's trees in a beautiful forest, and in this strange remnant of a spaceship nearby that we found to control on Dungeon Master 6, that we know we have just reached a level up. And you know what that means, is we must read the next bubble, no matter how insane it is. And since you recently revealed to the world that years ago Captain Adam was an Air Force man before he became a superhero, we are especially honored that you accepted our invitation to be on hand to introduce this new aircraft to the public. What? I won't allow. I won't allow them to take my spaceship just because he was an aerospace aeronautical engineer. And I will not do this to the world of astrology when an astronomer claims he has been on the moon first. But we must now do something unusual. We must thumb through the pages of time and see unto us Something that is going to grab the narrative now that we're past the fence. And that is, we may not get through Captain Adam all the way. And I'm going to show you a brief moment of every page until we can get to the ending. Because this is the spaceship. And they're going to fly off in it. And now I know why this robot-looking TV crane will suddenly turn us to a theater with a practically blank page until the sudden appearance of Captain Adam. Or is it not Captain Adam? Is it the shadow? And Oh, another comic book discussion of commercials. We must have got stuck in 1987 when all of this came out. Well, I do kind of have a mullet right now, I must admit, but 
captain. I tell you, dungeon master is the one that gets mullets quickest. When he's telling stories, he grows old. And it is old to know that that's either Captain Adam or it's one of these. It could even be Superman at this point. What if Superman and Captain Adam merged? What is going on in this world when Superman and Captain Adam merge with the shadow? And that's what they get. It looks like an angry flash head. Is this another page of abstract explosions and flying demons? This sounds like the Arabian Visigoth page just wasn't good enough for Dungeon Master. Now, there's an item we're looking for, and that almost looked like it, but that's a person flying away. So that doesn't count. But over here, we have some kind of mushroom cloud following a teacup ride that exploded in the desert of Orange County. Now, I'm not down here to see this kind of missile be launched just because the spaceship's in the sky. And if that's Iron Man, this is a DC comic, man. Try your other 10-man outfit. And look at this, Dungeon Master. This is the cleric. I need you over here to identify our object before the next commercial, which we are now seeing, and here, it's the warp zone. It's the warp zone. It looks like an explosion that that guy was thinking too much and his head exploded, but it's not. It's the warp zone. So now we head down here and we see, uh, that looks like what would have happened to us if we'd have been landed on a asses and had to crawl back. Now it's Captain Adam versus Free Mr. Freeze, who's not even a villain, he's a floating head. Who wrote this comic book? It's so convoluted. And who are these? We saw this? Okay, who's who of the comic book world and I recognize none of them? Oh, two free months of DC Comics. It's about the only thing I'd trade in this comic for. It's two free months of DC Comics. Now, we see Captain Adam, and in very good cartoonish form that we are in, we are coming the days around to see the ending. And we can't read all the letters written to Captain Adam from his fans. And we see the last... But we must fade back before Mickey closes us into Dungeon Master 9 and levels us up one more time. We must see what the caption wants from us. It says Captain Adam history was his origin, his girlfriend, his villains. They were all lies. He was never a superhero at all. He was a traitor condemned to die. Mabel, not even of the decade. Ah, making another call, madam, to my editor, telling him to stop payment on your check, you lying two-bit hustler. And then last night I raced up here to familiarize myself with enough of these gadgets to put on a good show, just good enough to rate our advance. You know, Emery, you were right about my instincts. After all these years, I hated to see them finally prove wrong. My vanity make me believe that you were Dr. Spectro. A mistake this report of ours shall never make twice. Dun, dun, dun it. No, don't. Kaboom. Well, nice knowing you. I'm Dr. Spectro. Part B and C. Hello, everyone. This is the Bard. We're at the Tavern of the Horsehead. Dr. Spectro, who are you? I want to do the evil deeds you want me to. And 
if I blow up a thing, then I'll send you an invisible ray, and we'll say, Dr. Spectro, there's no villain like you. Captain Adam on a row. Makes no difference what the thieves' guild stole. Maybe there's a license we can program for a plug. But what we got is like a comic book of love. And see the angry ones with nuclear power. Doesn't really match up with the things that were Arabian and nights of things genies found as the devil quiet himself. But Dr. Spectro is so much more evil than that. So sit down at the tavern. And have yourself a gallon of the whiskey that is right behind the bar. Have yourself a shilling, then you'll have yourself a brew. Cause all we do all day is drink, and all we do all night is drink. Except for that I am the bark, so I have to stay free of drink. And out of that wrote a withdrawal that became an atomic voice that was Dr. Adam, rescue me from Spectrum. See, I'm not a superhero, but I tell the story of the dungeon master who is telling you it's time to level up because the M-I-C-K-E-Y just closed the book on a student. We just caught a level up from all the whiskey we must brew. Someone drinks here, his name might be Captain Greenbeard, cause just stepped in on a pirate ship for Pokemon Beyond. Maybe then we will all fight back and win. Maybe we will go on further here. Whiskey aboard means we're gonna have a score. Everyone knows that the score is about 42 or 21, depending what you had to do. And I said, Everyone knows drinking limits are at 21, but my last limit to a drink was when I fell down the stairs and had no fun. You may think it's cool to drink, but just be careful, dude, cause I know one of us may appear like that chick at the end of Spectra's Rude. But it looks like Captain Adam held his whiskey, held his fireball, and everything he drank martinis just to unleash the Phantom Bomb. So I will close with one more letter, drop it unto you, that this short dungeon master should have stayed on longer, but it's true that in the allotted time we have, we have to make it on the quick. That doesn't mean I will not find a specific thing to nitpick with, cause I said, alcohol is bad, alcohol is good. Alcohol is evil and alcohol is good and I said no one worries that there's only one word for good and bad and evil are different words that perceive the way they should. 
Once in a while I get lost in dreaming of the days of sauce and all the tavern calls for brewskis now that we're awake. And my mistake was closing up on shop before the bar got out at 2 a.m. Last cough at Dr. Spectro. Now that Captain Adams drunk.